Guys, Boxing Gossip coming to you here on a Friday evening. Um, if you're new to the channel, please press subscribe. Also, give me a follow on Twitter, at Boxing Gossip, and add me as a friend on Facebook using the link in the description below. Um, wanted to discuss some positive news that's come out of the Frank Warren camp this week. Um, specifically with relation to two fights. Now, I don't believe these fights have been officially announced or confirmed. I don't believe we have venues and dates and that sort of thing. Um, but Frank Warren has told um, various media outlets um, that Liam Smith will rematch um, Liam Williams. And I'm also hearing um, that Tyrone Nurse will fight Jack Catterall and that a deal is agreed and in place for that to take place this summer. Um, so those are two fights involving four highly touted British talents and I think they're both really really interesting fights um, and you know I give Frank credit for that. Um, I don't think either of these fights are going to be massive fights amongst the casual boxing population but that's often the way with Box Nation fighters and from a hardcore perspective, I really do believe that these are two very, very interesting fights. Um, let's start with Liam Smith versus Liam Williams, the rematch. Um, I believe the similarities between Liam Smith versus Liam Williams 2 and Frotz versus Groves 2 are substantial. Uh, Frotz versus Groves 1 was a big fight, but it was nowhere near as big a fight as Frotz versus Groves 2. And the reason it spiralled into something much, much bigger and much, much more headline grabbing um, was because of how good the first fight was and because of how much controversy related to the first fight. Now, with Liam Smith versus Liam Williams, um, first things first, the first fight was good, it was entertaining, um, but it was also very controversial. And I'm going to say it was controversial for three distinct reasons. Number one, Liam Smith who was the substantially bigger man on the night, missed weight. Um, you know, and that, that could be suggested that he had a, an advantage going into the ring with the fact that he didn't have to cut himself down to the light middleweight weight. Number two, allegations that Liam Smith fought a very, very dirty fight, uh, in particular relating to uh, headbutts. And number three, the stoppage, uh, where Gary Lockett threw in the towel on his man when his man appeared to be ahead in the fight certainly would have been ahead on my scorecard at the time um, so I think the controversy was there and the sort of unknown factors relating to this fight was certainly present to mean that a rematch uh, has a lot of merit you know when a, a fight ends and people are talking about was the stoppage right or wrong or you know did Smith have an advantage because he missed the weight you know these are all solid foundations to build a rematch upon so it's a good fight um, however just like Frost Groves won I believe that the nature of the controversy and the nature of the stoppage uh, means that one aspect of this fight has been ignored yes Liam Williams was ahead at the time of the stoppage yes Liam Williams had looked very good in the lead up to the fight and yes you could make a strong case that Liam Williams shouldn't have been pulled out of his corner by Gary Lockett in a similar fashion, you could argue that George Groves was well up against Carl Frotz and that George Groves was looking good and shouldn't have been stopped. However, did the early stoppage hide what may have happened had the fight continued for another round? I always maintained that in Frotz Groves 1, had George Groves not been stopped, I actually would have backed Carl Frotz to rally late and finish strong. You know, Frotz is an experienced fighter. Um, he was the more experienced of the two. He fought more championship bouts. We'd seen Frotz rally late in fights, go 12 rounds. You know, we'd seen him stop Jermaine Taylor, I believe, in the last round. Uh, and I believed that George Groves was starting to flag with stamina. So even though I agree in Frotz Groves won, the stoppage was incorrect, I kind of feel that whilst George Groves was robbed of the chance to win the fight, Frotz was also robbed of the chance to rally strong and get a well-deserved stoppage and I think to a lesser extent there's a similar theme in this Liam Williams Liam Smith fight Liam Williams me was flagging his stamina was decreasing he looked tired in there he was starting to get uh, walked down by Liam Smith 
And Liam Smith's a very, very dangerous fighter to have walked down on you. You know, we always knew that Liam Williams would probably outbox Liam Smith from Reigns. Uh, but we thought that Liam Smith would have an advantage when he was able to close the gap and, you know, unload shots to the body and uh, sit on Williams' chest. And for me, that was starting to happen with more and more regularity and with more and more effect as we got towards the end of that fight. Um, and although Liam Smith made no fans at the end of the fight by saying, had Lockett not pulled him out, he'd have stopped him the next round. You know, I'm not 100% saying I agree with that. But I do believe the, turn, uh, the tide of that fight was turning. You know, I do believe that Liam Smith was starting to um, become more and more dominant in that fight. And on the balance of probability, I think there's a high chance that Liam Smith would have rallied strong to sweep the late rounds and potentially to hurt and maybe even stop Liam Williams. And I believe kind of that the nature of how that fight ended with the headbutt, with the stoppage, with the corner throwing in the towel has made people forget that that's actually the case. You know, Richard Dwyer often uses the phrase knockouts cause amnesia. I appreciate this was a corner stoppage as opposed to a knockout, but I think it's got some validity with relation to this fight. Um, continuing the comparison with Frost Groves 1, yeah, if we think of Frotz Groves 1, it was an all-action fight. Huge power punches were exchanged. Frotz was dropped in the first round. Frotz rallied strong, recklessly, aggressively. Um, the second fight was really, to be honest, the second fight was actually a dull fight. And Eddie Hearn kind of got lucky that night that it had such a devastating ending that nobody really complained about how dull the first fight was. Sorry, the first few rounds were of that fight. Um, but I expect in this fight we could see a more tentative approach as well. Um, Liam Smith, like Carl Frotz, is going to be aware that his younger, less experienced opponent um, potentially has a boxing advantage. So he's not going to want to overcommit and allow himself to be caught early and lose early rounds in such fashion again. Uh, similarly, the, uh, the young upstart, in this case Liam Williams, in that case George Groves, is going to be aware that they were stopped in the first fight as their opponent was starting to come on strong and as the more experienced uh more you know the guy with more experience at world title levels that we say uh, as they were going into the championship rounds maybe that more experienced fighter was looking to uh, looking stronger so maybe liam williams will be slightly more tentative maybe he'll be looking to use up less energy and throw less power punches early on. Maybe he'll be kind of thinking about conserving some stuff so that he's still able to fight in rounds 10, rounds 11, rounds 12, you know. Um, so what I'm getting at is I think there are substantial parallels stylistically between Frox Groves and William Smith. I think the first fight has substantial parallels. And I suspect that the parallels weren't in there. I think the rematch could be different. I think Williams will be more tentative. I think Williams will look to use less energy and conserve stuff for the later rounds. And I think Liam Smith, similar to Carl Frost, will look to limit the opportunities that his younger opponent has to outbox him um, and will look to uh, make sure he doesn't lose the early rounds in such fashion as he did last time. And I suspect that in a rematch, this will play out in favour of Liam Smith just as it did for Carl Frost in the first fight, in the second fight with George Grove, sorry. Because whilst Liam Williams throws a lot of very, very attractive punches and combinations from the outside, I believe if he's in any way tentative, if he's in any way trying to conserve energy, I think Liam Smith's going to be all over him. Liam Smith's the bigger man, and I think Liam Smith is going to have confidence from that first fight. He's going to have confidence that, that was a poor performance from him. He missed weight. He had a poor preparation. Um, he was losing the early rounds and he still found a way to win. So I think Liam Smith is going to come in in much better shape, feeling much better about himself. Um, and I think he's going to think if he beat Liam Williams on his worst night, he's going to be able to beat him you know, when he's, when he's in good form. Um, so I suspect that there's a chance Liam Williams is maybe more trying to focus on back foot game and conserving energy. And I think that will play right into Liam Smith's hands. 
and he's going to be able to impose himself more on Liam Williams, sit on Liam Williams' chest and uh, you know, start banking rounds early and potentially grind him down and stop him late again. Um, I picked Liam Williams to win the first fight. I thought Liam Williams would have substantial advantages uh, in the fight, and that proved to be the case. But I was slightly surprised how Gary Lockett pulled Liam Williams out. Now, potentially, that's due to Gary Lockett's own experiences. We've seen him pull Enzo Macronelli out of a world title fight before. Um, we've seen Gary Lockett suffer the Nick Blackwell situation. And potentially, um, you know, he wanted to make sure that there wasn't going to be a, a repeat of that terrible situation that occurred with, with Nick Blackwell. And if that's the case, I understand that. Um, but with Liam Williams, in hindsight, I am slightly concerned about how the tank did seem to empty and about how, when Beefy was really able to impose himself, it did seem to be a fight that was going in a certain direction. Uh, and I do think that probably played a role in Lockett's decision to pull Liam Williams out of the fight. Um, so I actually think a rematch favours Liam Smith. Um, I think we'll see a better Liam Smith. I think we'll see Liam Smith adapt a bit more. Um, and I think if Liam Williams tries to conserve energy, um, it may end up actually playing into Liam Smith's hands and it may be harder to keep Liam Smith at range with the long range work. Um, so yeah, it's a great fight though. The first fight was entertaining, this one could be even better. Um, there's enough unanswered questions for the first fight to merit this rematch, so I applaud it and it's one I look forward to, certainly. Um, Tyrone Nurse versus Jack Catterall. Do you know what, I feel a bit sorry for Tyrone Nurse. Uh, when he was with Matchroom, Tyrone Nurse was used routinely as the opponent. You know, when he fought Tommy Coyle, I always believed you know, Eddie Hearn wanted Tommy Coyle to win that fight. Tommy Coyle was the home fighter there. I know Tyrone Nurse was working with Eddie Hearn, but realistically, I thought Eddie Hearn viewed Tyrone Nurse as someone who was expendable, someone who was beatable. And he tried to get him beat two or three times with prospects that Eddie Hearn rated. And Tyrone Nurse held his own, got the victories, and kept winning. Um, when he moved over to Frank Warren, I kind of expected Tyrone Nurse to be given a push, where he was the number one fighter, um, where he was the, the prospect on the up. And I really hoped to see Tyrone Nurse moved. I was hoping in the trajectory of a world title shot. You know, I wasn't necessarily convinced Tyrone Nurse had the ability to win a world title, but I certainly believed he had the ability to fight above British level. Um, and I wanted to see how he'd fare moving up in level, maybe in some sort of world title eliminators or, or fights of that nature. Um, his first fight, I was disappointed by. I thought it was a fight that flew under the radar against an opponent who we were unfamiliar with largely. Um, I believe Jack Catterall stopped the opponent, uh, whereas Tyrone Nurse dropped a draw against him. Uh, and I believe Tyrone Nurse performed very, very flat. Um, I think Iris Tom on my podcast said this, and I think he's right, that Tyrone Nurse is his own worst enemy. You know, he's a guy who's got all the skills to pay the bills. He's a guy who can school people from the center of the ring and from range. But time and time again, he gets lazy. He seems to zone out of fights and he sits on the ropes. He gives up rounds. He ends up getting caught by punches he shouldn't get caught. It's almost reminiscent of a, a young to mid career James DeGale who was doing that. And in, to an extent persists in doing that. Um, you know, has all the skills, all the slickness to win the rounds in the middle of the ring, um, but just never seems to do that for 12 rounds. And it ended up a poor performance from Tyrone Nurse. Maybe he deserved to win. As I say, it was a draw. Um, but he can only blame himself because he really gave the judges far too many excuses to score rounds to the other guy in the ring that night. Um, unfortunately, I now believe that's led to Frank Warren using Tyrone Nurse uh, as the opponent in the same way that Eddie Hearn did. Jack Catterall is a hyped Frank Warren prospect and it looks like Frank's going to make that fight seemingly with the belief that based on Tyrone Nurse's last performance, Jack Catterall would be a strong favourite in the fight. And I haven't seen any lines from the bookmakers, but I imagine Catterall would be a favourite. He's viewed as the bigger puncher, the more explosive operator, and potentially viewed as the guy with the higher upside, given that Tyrone Nurse keeps dropping multiple rounds to this British level opposition. The real key question here is, against a better opponent, against a guy like Jack Catterall, who's a name and who's well respected in boxing, will Tyrone Nurse bring out that additional level to his game? Does Tyrone Nurse have that 
you know, next step that he can raise his game to in order to beat a guy like Jack Catterall. Um, I've always believed that Tyrone Nurse could um, bring out that additional level and, you know, take himself to a European title level, maybe title eliminators and that sort of stuff. But Jack Catterall looked pretty good last time out. He's an improving fighter. He's making waves. And you kind of wonder who is the higher upside of these two. It's a complete unknown. One thing I will say is that if Tyrone Nurse is again victorious, if Tyrone Nurse frustrates the young favourite, if Tyrone Nurse beats the guy who maybe is creating more excitement amongst the boxing public, then it really is time to move Tyrone Nurse towards world title level because you know the domestic scene at the minute, you've got guys like Jack Catterall, Hara Davies, Joss Taylor, it's very, very, very live. But I don't see those Ahara Davies and Josh Taylor fights as being easy to make. And you know, if Tyrone Nurse can beat a guy like Jack Catterall, he's, for me, um, deserving of moving above and beyond British title level, certainly. Uh, if Jack Catterall um, gets the win over Tyrone Nurse, you'd have to say, and it's not necessarily Frank Warren's fault, but you'd have to say the move away from Matchroom has been a bit of a disaster for Tyrone Nurse. Two fights in draw in the first fight and a loss to Jack Catterall in the second fight you know it's not been something that works out for him and you wonder if he's a guy with enough marketability and with enough fans to bounce back and get another shot you kind of wonder whether he's the guy who maybe flies too far under the radar to, to bounce back after a defeat like that I really don't know um, but if he's victorious hopefully Frank will, will give him a push and hopefully Frank will try and turn him into one of those fighters like a Liam Walsh or like a Terry Flanagan who maybe aren't the big punchers and maybe aren't the, the big personalities but they've got the skills in the ring uh, Jack Catterall if he gets rid of Tyrone Nurse if he puts on a dominant display he's a hugely exciting prospect and uh, I know at the minute the public are more excited about Ahara Davies v Josh Taylor as a domestic light welterweight class but you know, uh, Catterall's a, a very, very fascinating fighter to throw into that mix as well. And he's looked very, very handy. Um, so two good fights on the Frank Warren side. Very much looking forward to both. Uh, keen to see how they play out. They're both uh, what could be described as 50-50 fights. Let me know your thoughts. An exciting time for British boxing. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Who do you think is going to be victorious out of these two matchups? Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. Um, if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed before for whatever reason do press subscribe so you can check out all of my other videos as always appreciate you guys tuning in many thanks for watching